We are halfway through what is turning into one of the busiest years Elite Dangerous has ever had. Reminiscent of the games early heydays if the current plan plays out as expected by the end of this year we'll have seen the spectacular destruction of multiple Thargoid motherships, 4 new ships introduced into the game, a complete overhaul and relaunch of power play and a whole brand new as yet unannounced feature. In this video I'll talk through what I think FDev might be up to, what is likely just around the corner and why I think this year and what could be landing after powerplay is so important for the longer term future of the game and everyone that plays it. For the last 18 months or so at least the vast majority of the new content dropped into Elite Dangerous has revolved around the salvation spurred Thargoid invasion of the bubble. The emergence of a Thargoid invasion force and humanity's fight back has led to the eventual destruction of 4, so far at least, of the 8 titans and whilst the mechanics of the anti-Thargoid effort haven't all been directly AX in nature there's no denying that events in all of 2023 and so far the first 6 months of 2024 have, on the broader stage at least, all revolved around battling, escaping or avoiding Thargoids if you're playing Elite Dangerous in the bubble around Sol. As I mentioned at the time of this recording 4 of the 8 titans are destroyed. The last titan to be destroyed, Haddad, went for an early bath 4 weeks ago and the smart money is currently guesstimating that the next titan, Indra, will fall later this week. Making this particular juncture the almost exact middle of the Thargoid War endgame. That is of course assuming we actually get to destroy the last 4 titans. I'm very deliberately casting a degree of doubt on the fate of those last 3 or 4 titans for a reason. The war has introduced a huge amount of new gameplay into the anti xeno loops at the very least. That gameplay would have cost money to develop and it's hard to imagine a world where FDev would just throw that work in the bin because we won and the war ended. I do think the war will end, absolutely, and likely quite soon in fact but it makes sense to me that the gameplay we've seen developed for the Thargoid portions of the game will remain afterwards and will likely morph into other areas of the game at least. If it remains in a slightly similar form then the gameplay requires the presence of at least one Titan mothership. It then follows that either we won't be able to destroy them all or the Thargoids will deliver another one of them at the very least. How that newly developed gameplay morphs into the rest of the game brings me to my next point. I've said this before on this channel but it bears repeating. It strikes me that the most logical place for that newly established AX gameplay to move to is for it to be folded into power play. Doing so would give the AX community in the game a meaningful forever war with a goal, that goal being pushing the danger daisy flavoured advance back from human occupied space. There is the double advantage from Frontier's perspective of the presence of a Thargoid power player becoming a banner for the pro Xeno community to rally behind. With that said, in my humble opinion it doesn't make a lot of sense in law for the existing Thargoid civilization to be accepting of human assistance no matter how well meaning. From what very little we know of the Thargoids their societal structure just doesn't work like that. They are, in essence, a race of huge insect like beings, their hierarchy being formed from controlling hive queens down through purpose and task specific drones. As such they have more in common with ants or bees than they do with humans. Dealing with them in the form that we've become used to and I say that quite pointedly would be like inviting a wasps nest you found in your loft space to negotiate their removal in front of the United Nations. The wasps will not only have no understanding of the nature of the United Nations or why it would even exist, they would have no interest in learning why the UN might exist and the encounter would result in rapidly descending chaos and lots of screaming. As a matter of historical in-game fact a peace delegation attempted to flag down the Stargoid Taranis as it approached the bubble. If you'd like to know how it played out you'll find the charred and burnt remains of the megaship Kingfisher in Hyades Sector YOQB5-1. The audio logs from the unfortunate souls on board will tell you everything you need to know about wasps at the United Nations. So if we are to fold the Thargoids into Powerplay 2.0 how then might that happen? 
Enter then Sojin A, the former entirely unwilling experiment component of Salvation's less than ethical evil mega corporation Azimuth Biochemicals. If you've not been keeping up Sojin A was biomechanically altered in some way in an attempt to merge her with a captured Thargoid vessel. Whilst the results of the experiments were broadly unsuccessful Sojin A survived the ordeal and managed to escape. Azimuth's dabblings in her cerebellum left her with a barely understood ability to, at the very least, interpret on some level Thargoid communications. If she was altered to be able to communicate with Thargoid biotech and as a result she can still hear them there's a good chance she can make herself heard by them as well. Whilst it's obviously not outside the realms of possibility it seems odd that FDev would go to the trouble of setting up Sojin A as a Xeno Doctor Doolittle to then not use her to commune with the Thargoids on a meaningful level. Don't misunderstand me here I don't think she's about to join with a collective and become a full on Goid Queen Bee but given an army of followers she could easily become a force to be reckoned with. There are, of course, an unknown number of quite devout Far God cultists who consider her to be of divine origin but there are also, let's not forget, millions of abductees from the Thargoid war still in stasis secured aboard the remaining 4 Thargoid mother vessels. It's been hinted at in the narrative that some of the early Titan rescuees had shown small signs of biological change. This excerpt is from an item posted to Galnet on the 12th of November last year when an Imperial Medical Research Officer said the following quote, ...our analysis of abducted Imperial citizens currently in isolation has yielded disturbing results. There is clear evidence of an autoimmune response in multiple subjects. These manifest as minor physiological changes at a superficial level which are mostly being dismissed. In my professional opinion this qualifies as evidence that these individuals have been altered in some way by the Thargoid constructed bio storage capsules." End quote. If Sojin A could somehow stop the alien onslaught by horse whispering to the Thargoids and free those people then that's potentially at the very least a flat packed army, possibly even a civilization, ready to go that owes her at the very minimum a debt of gratitude. Sojin A hasn't been heard of in the Elite Dangerous narrative since December last year when it became apparent that, in all likelihood, the consciousness of her nemesis Caleb Salvation Witcherly likely survived the events of HIP 22460 inside Guardian Technology. That fact that Caleb Salvation Witcherly survived in one form or another and Sojin A's desire for revenge is a nice nebulous motivation for whatever she then wants to perpetuate using her flat packed civilization. That's all just theory of course and, as we've said many times on this channel before, FDev often go left when we think they're going to go right so take all this with a pinch of salt. That's the where we're at right now and where we might be headed in the immediate but what about longer term future? From the deployment of Odyssey onwards there seems to me, at least, to be a thread working its way through all of the original Elite Dangerous gameplay loops and disciplines. Regardless of what you might think about it, aside from the on foot combat aspect Odyssey was largely about exploration. Whole new tenuous atmospheric planetary surfaces were added to the game along with numerous plant like biological entities and bacteria. For the initial deployment at least, AX operations remained completely untouched, there were no new ships with the expansion and nothing really fundamentally changed for ship based PvP, PvE, trading or mining. Since the rocky launch and subsequent stabilization of Odyssey the game has been largely focused on adding something more dynamic for the AX community and for those looking for a more challenging end game style experience in the form of the Thargoid invasion and its new tools and gameplay loops. 
From announcements recently it's now fairly apparent that, whilst the Thargoid War has been in more open development, Frontier have also been working in the background on a more fundamental overhaul of power play and, I would argue, the noises FDev have made of late would seem to indicate that, through the power play overhaul and deployment, they also see a way to give the PvP community the much needed meaning to their gameplay that they have been craving with the proposal and open conversation FDev plans on taking power play to open only play. If you follow the line I'm drawing FDev have covered off exploration and on foot with Odyssey then meaningful AX combat through the Thargoid war they're now hitting the double whammy of power play and meaningful PvP. So of Elite's major professions and loops that just leaves trading and mining. For the future after Powerplay 2.0 deploys aside from the new ships that we know have been added or are coming this year that brings us to the as yet unannounced brand new feature that FDev mentioned way back at the start of this year. To quote Arthur's words from January quote ...this is a new feature. This isn't a rework. This is a brand new feature coming to Elite Dangerous this year." End quote. I've commented many times on this channel before that I believe that new feature may well be some sort of base building mechanic. Before I explain my logic here let me stress again the caveat that FDev quite often go left when we think they're going to go right however there have been now well documented bona fide leaks from within FDev from a time before Odyssey was even announced that implicated and indeed directly stated that base building was at the very least being investigated. If indeed base building was to be implemented then it strikes me that it would require at least four fundamental things. Firstly exploration data and planetary surveys to determine suitable locations for a base to be built. Secondly raw and manufactured commodities in bulk to facilitate the construction and thirdly bulk haulage of those commodities to move them to the identified construction location. In those three requirements you can clearly see where there might be end game level content for the more PvE inclined players. Exploration surveys would obviously appeal to explorers, the gathering of raw materials could be linked into existing mining gameplay loops and bulk haulage would appeal to the trader and freighter pilots. You'll note at this point I said there were at least four fundamental requirements in my mind to make base building a valuable proposition. That missing fourth fundamental is, quite simply, a purpose for the base to exist in the first place. What does a base provide or give to the player beyond vanity and a sense of ownership for the player or players that constructed it? Here's where it gets a degree more nebulous with even less evidence either way however FDev have stated that a review of engineering and material gathering is still on the cards for them. I believe a solid argument could be made that manufactured materials could be provided by a base with an industrial slant to it. Raw materials could be provided by a base with a processing slant to it and signals gathering installations could gather data etc. This is of course all conjectural but if this is where we're headed it would nicely round off a few loops giving PvE players, traders, haulers, miners and explorers more meaning to their endgame beyond the acquisition of wealth and, beyond all this, it would reignite the expansion of the human occupied bubbles opening up new gameplay possibilities and indeed real estate for player minor factions and squadrons away from the struggles of power play and the limitations of the now somewhat overcrowded bubble around Sol. Do you think base building is in Elite's future? If you do what features would you like to see from it? And if it isn't base building just what is the announced brand new feature? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe so that YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to support our work here at the Burr Pit you can also join us on Patreon. Links to that and everything we've talked about in this video you'll find linked below.